Hello everyone, I am Kurz from Low Mana Gamers and welcome to Comic Watch, the series where we look into the lore and speculation around Blizzard's Overwatch comics. Today, I thought I'd take us back to the very beginning with the first comic, McCree's Train Hopper. As the first comic out of six that have currently been released, it's likely this one has faded from memory somewhat. That's a shame, because of all the comics, this one is probably the best for shedding some light on Overwatch and Blackwatch, while the others are a lot more personal to their subject. Firstly, we get a nice little feel for the technology and society of the day in the US. The train McCree is riding is apparently going at 640k mph, about half the speed of sound. In reality, this is only a little bit faster than the speeds the bullet train in Japan can do currently, but it's way faster than your regular railway. Society does however seem much the same as it is now, with the economic equality promised by the pre-crisis technology not as much in evidence as the tech itself. This is the first and so far only time we see talent at work outside of cinematics, and it's also the only time we've seen them working without Reaper or Widow present. The teachings of the former, however, are very much apparent, and we see just how intertwined the strategies of Blackwatch are with the modern talent and attack teams. To me, this backs up the belief that many of those recruited by Reyes into his Black Ops unit were criminals by nature, like McCree, but maintained and nurtured their illegal tendencies while under the Overwatch banner, unlike McCree. There's a school of thought that Reaper passed on his knowledge after he began working with them, but the modern Reaper seems to be much more intent on killing than he does on teaching. This feels very much like something well drilled and learned a long time ago. The main thing that backs this up though is the Talon Grunt recognising McCree by his voice and swearing to kill him, sounding very much like a guy that worked alongside the gunslinger in Blackwatch and resents him for turning his back on them when their true intentions became clear. Whatever the case, they are clearly very well funded and informed knowing what was on the train, how best to infiltrate it, and that they need a code to get their hands on it. McCree is a wanted man. Presumably that's why the operator wouldn't sell folks like him a ticket, but it begs the question what he's done since his time in Overwatch to warrant these serious accusations against him. I don't believe any of this stems from his time in Deadlock, as that was in the distant past, and in theory was expunged the moment he joined Overwatch, so this has to be down to events post him leaving. Due to his Blackwatch affiliations and the part they played in the downfall of Overwatch, it's possible he wasn't afforded the same level of respect or adoration as the public reserve for folks like Tracer and Winston, so post Petrus Act, he took the full brunt of his vigilanteism. Previously I'd suspected that his former Overwatch colleagues would also mistrust him due to his time in Blackwatch, but given he's on the list of agents being recalled by Winston, it would seem he still has friends there. Either way, McCree knows exactly what the outcome of his actions will look like to the wider world and his nonchalant attitude towards it suggests he's both used to it and entirely comfortable with the choices he's made. Finally, the cube. This is the biggest talking point, it's why I left it till last. As we have no clue what it is, and even at this point after four shorts and six comics we're none the wiser, it's best to compare to other activities and operations we know Talon have carried out recently. The attempt to capture this cube sits alongside the mission to retrieve the Doomfist gauntlet, the raid on Gibraltar for Overwatch agent locations, and the assassination of Takatha Mondata. These are all pretty large in scope and purpose, so for Talon to commit as many resources, and McCree even notes how expensive it would be, we know that cube has got to be a big deal. McCree demonstrated his pragmatic nature in booting it off the train to save himself and the passengers, but at the expense of letting Talon get their hands on it. I fully anticipate that at some point in the future this will come back to bite the good guys on the ass, but in what capacity I do not know. What do you guys think the cube is? What does it do? Uh, what's inside it? I don't believe I've seen anything else in the Overwatch universe share a similar glow, but if I've missed something, let me know. Thanks for watching this episode of Comic Watch, and as always, your thoughts, feelings, and crazy, crazy theories are very welcome in the comments below. If you'd love to see more Overwatch content from us, then please hit those like and subscribe buttons. We launched our new series, Feel at Home, on the weekend, so check that out, and as ever, the Law Watch ball keeps rolling. Until next time, I've been Kurz, thanks for watching.